Hi, just to follow up on my shattered LG Mono X uh, solar panel from my roost, and I've done previous videos on this, and people wanted me to actually investigate under the microscope the impact down here. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. I've got my Anden Star uh, USB microscope here. We're going to uh, uh, screen capture some uh, stuff from that and have a squiz inside to see if we can figure out what actually impacted this thing. Now the current theories are uh, one which I don't really subscribe to which is the cricket ball and if it is a cricket ball, uh, there should be some red residue left over because cricket balls here in Australia, they're red. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think it is. I think it's a much sharper impact than that. Uh, the other one is something that fell from a plane, either a bolt or some ice or uh, something like that because I am near a flight path here. Or as everyone's favourite theory seems to be, it's a micrometeorite. Well, is it? Hmm, let's see if we can find any residue here. Or if it's not a micrometeorite, could be aliens. Yeah, aliens. But of course, one of the problems with doing this is that uh, I don't know how long it was up there. Uh, after I actually discovered it, it was still up there for like many weeks and it rained and poured and all sorts of things. So um, it, there's a high likelihood that any uh, evidence in there has since been uh, washed away, but you never know, there could be something uh, stuck in there between the uh, glass shards and, and things like that, but it seems obvious that there is some really sharp impact there. Rather than a cricket ball, it looks, you know, like really something uh, sharp and violent, so like, yeah, like a steel bolt from a plane or a micrometeorite, because, well, I haven't done the um, I haven't researched the figures on this, maybe I will but, uh, when I go edit this video to see how likely a micrometeorite impact actually is. I mean, it's, it's incredibly unlikely, but it's a non-zero possibility. So anyway, we'll get the uh, microscope in there and have a squiz. Okay, let's have a quick uh, overview of this thing. Hopefully I've got this uh, in focus. It is quite hard to see on the... Uh, screen out here. Now, um, yes, I've got it in like highest resolution, 1600 by 1200 or thereabouts, so it's only a couple of frames per second, but I want the greatest resolution possible, so please excuse the uh, the poor update in here, um, because it's not going to be pretty. I'm only getting like three frames per second or something like that, so actually it's dropping a lot of frames too, which is not great, but anyway, we can see, if we move around there, there's... Nothing obvious around the outside. If it was a cricket ball, cricket balls are quite large, and I would have expected to see some uh, some red, um, some sort of you know some sort of residue. But I can't actually seem to. I can't see anything in there at all. And if we go out towards the outer outer edges, there still nothing. So it seems like it's it could have been a sharp object that uh, impacted and then uh, took the rest of it with it you know like I'm you know certainly <laughs> not going to be pretend to be an expert on how this thing uh, would shatter with various different types of objects but it doesn't seem out of the realm of possibility that it would be a really sharp object now you can see directly in the center there that there looks to be some sort of brown is it brown I don't know maybe I can't see it on the uh, screen here but some sort of brownish thing so I will now uh, zoom in closer and uh, see if we can investigate that center spot and here we go hopefully that's in focus and yeah it, it definitely looks like there's some sort of really tiny sharp impact there I mean that is not a pattern that I would have expected if it was like a cricket ball sized object. What the, uh, uh, well, actually, I don't actually have any measurement um, on this. Maybe I should actually get a ruler to uh, put that in there. Hang on. So what you're seeing there now on the ruler, they're half millimeter increments. So as you can see, it, you know, something really small seems to have impacted that. So this, I think lends credibility to the micrometeorite um, theory. I mean, they, there's some, looks to be something really off-color in there, and it really seems to have 
being a really sharp pointed object. Well now, check it out. This is uh, zoomed in once again and I can see some little, what looks like little tiny particles there. Really weird. I, is, is it? Is that actually part of a micrometeorite? <laughs> It'd be awesome if it is. Um, I, there's little particles in there, but I, I'm pretty convinced that this is a really sharp pointed impact and it's just taken the rest of it out with it. I mean, if you have a look there, it's just, you know, if it hits the center, I don't know how it's taken out this ring around here like this, but that could just be properties of the glass and how it's uh, shattered and things like that. So, um, I, I don't mind that theory at all because I wouldn't have expected something so sharp like that from a, uh, a large curved object like a cricket ball. It's just not something that I would uh, expect. So there you go, that, that, that's half millimeter increments there on the fuzzy out of focus ruler, but yeah, interesting. Okay, I've got a little bit faster uh, updating now. I've gone to 800 by 600, and, which means that we can probably move this around. This might be better actually. Well, there's another, yeah, look, there's some, there's definitely some objects in there. You can see those dark, dark objects. And now that I look around, I can actually see quite a few of them. You can hear, probably hear a plane going overhead now. Uh, they're, they're not that common. I'm not really um, in a flight path. Like, I'm, I'm near a flight path, but uh, yeah, it's not a really... Uh, well-trodden one and it's like 30 k's out from the airport so um, they are significantly high by the time they get here but look look at all those particles in there look at that that is that is very unusual i'm is that a little rock i don't know what type of impact or what size object micrometeorite would do that but there definitely does seem to be some residue of something left over there. See if I can get even closer. This is not the world's best microscope. I can't use my good microscope at the lab because I can't really, it's hard to get the solar panel under, under it, of course. So, but yeah, there we go. There we go. They, do, they definitely look embedded. They look... They look embedded. I don't think they've come down in the last shower. I think they're, they're well and truly embedded in the glass, whatever they are. I reckon that is a genuine space rock, folks. So I don't, I'm pretty darn sure this is not a cricket ball. So... And metal, if it was like a bolt falling from a plane or something weird like that. Maybe a dead bird falling from the sky. I No, I think we've got ourselves a meteorite impact. It's got to be. Now, this is probably the best magnification I'm going to get on this thing. So... Look at that. They're definitely embedded in there. That's right smack in the center. Look at that. I think I've been lucky enough to have a micrometeorite impact. It's got to be it. Let me know if there's any experts out there. Please let us know what you think that is because I damn well think that it is a micrometeorite. Either that or it's aliens. So that has to be the most plausible theory because like I am seeing uh, objects directly right in the center where that thing hit. And sure it's been washed out, uh, rain many times since then, but uh, I reckon that uh, it's impacted straight in the center there, probably only tiny, like, you know, five millimeters across, I don't know, I'm guessing, something like that. Um, because, you know, the energy uh, would have been incredible if it's like, you know, the size of a golf ball or something. Uh, probably would have gone right through. But, um, yeah, I can show you the uh, back of the panel. It didn't get a good close-up last time, so I'll show you the back, the pattern 
on the back of the panel. Now this is going to be hard to see, but there's like a, an outer pattern like that, and there's like an inner lump, but interestingly, I can feel that bit right there. That is definitely a very, very sharp impact. I can feel this big raised bump there. Like, well, big, like I can feel it, okay? It's a tiny little, tiny little bump, and I can actually feel that. I re it's gotta be micrometeorite. That tiny little thing, as I said, it could only be like millimeters across by the time it got, uh, got to ground level here, but because most of them disintegrate before they hit the ground. Um, but, geez, yeah, yeah. I have no doubt if it was a bolt or something bigger, it'd be uh, different. It's definitely not a cricket ball. Definitely not. So there's just a ruler. The, to the outer one's about seven centimeters or thereabouts. And uh, no, by the way, it is not a bullet. Somebody hasn't fired a bullet. This is Australia, okay? People don't just randomly fire. They basically don't have guns, let alone just randomly fire them off, okay? It just doesn't happen. So uh, it, it is not that. Now, if we just do some quick math here, which I'm sure somebody will point out if I've goofed this up, uh, let's take a look at micrometeorites on Wikipedia here. And, well, you can go deep in and verify the numbers and things like that. But we'll just go by what we've got here. Now, approximately 10 to the power of uh, 17 micrometeorites enter the atmosphere every year. Uh, about 10% of those actually hit the surface as micrometeorites. They're micrometeoroids. If they're actually in space, they only become meteorites when they actually hit. And approximately uh, 2,700 tons per year makes it to the surface. Well, tons isn't very good, so we'll convert that to uh, grams. That's uh, 2,700 times 10 to the power of 6 grams per year make it to the surface. So we can work out the average uh, weight of a micrometeorite. And that turns out to divide it by 10 to the power of uh, 16. Turns out to be uh, about 270 times 10 to the power of minus 9 grams on average per meteorite. And if we look up the top here... Um, um, that second uh, red mark, um, they reckon individual micrometeorites weigh between 10 to the power of minus 9 and 10 to the power of 14 grams. So that figures somewhere in there. So we're in the ballpark. And then uh, if we take the Earth's uh, surface, 510 million square kilometers, give or take, uh, we convert that to square meters, 5.1 times 10 to the power of 14 square meters. And, well... Do the simple uh, division and you get an average of 392 micrometeorite impacts on my 20 square meter solar array each year. That's more than one per day. Now, of course, why isn't everyone's... Um, solar array shattered right mine shouldn't if mine shatters you know roughly every year gets hit every year then everyone else's should as well these things are incredibly rare well it's almost certainly of course obviously because there's just not enough energy in most of these they only the average only weighs uh, 270 times 10 to the power of minus 9 grams. And, well, I'll leave it up to uh, uh, everyone else to go and calculate, you know, based on the velocity and the impact force and everything like that. And my LG Mono X uh, panels are very rugged. They're designed for, like, you know, golf ball or tennis ball-size hail to hit them and not uh, shatter. They're, they're actually rated for uh, 5,400 pascals. So, you know, if you conv that's, a, uh, that's a pressure, of course. So you convert that. That's about 550 kilograms per square meter. And, of course, you could scale that down to a little impact size, but it's going to be not accurate but anyway um just because yeah it's designed as a sheet impact so i don't know if they actually have a spec for a point impact or not but yeah 550 uh, kilos per square meter so you can kind of sort of maybe back of the envelope uh work out what you need in terms of um a micrometeorite uh weight given the velocity uh, i think uh, i saw somewhere at 11 kilometers uh per second or thereabouts so you know you can calculate uh, the point energy and all that sort of jazz, but I'll leave that up to you. But there you go. That is a lot of micrometeorite impacts. I was actually shocked at that. Um, but they're all too small to really do any damage. But hey, I got lucky. Hey. So there you have it. I think odds on this is a genuine micrometeorite impact. What are the odds of it happening to me 
um, you know, <laughs> who blogs about this sort of stuff. But anyway, definitely micrometeorite. I reckon I, I'm 90% sure that's what it is now. But hey, I, I, this is my first micrometeorite impact. I, you know, I'm a bit of a noob. So if you've got any other better theories or uh, anyone, you know, like knows about this sort of stuff, a few um, people actually analysed the uh, pattern and said, uh, yes, it, it would be a very sharp impact. It's not like a ball or something like that. And it seems to back it up. There's some residue in there, which looks granular, dirty, it's, it's like, almost like rock. Although I have to review the uh, footage, it was hard to see on the screen here, uh, out in the sun, but yeah, micrometeorite impact, awesome! <laughs> I'll leave a uh, link to the EV log forum down below where you can discuss this or leave it in the comments if you've, when you're an expert in this field and you've got any better suggestions, but odds on, I reckon. Awesome. Catch you next time.